Hey everybody, Texas Stroke here, Lance's Performance Shop, LoneStarMopars.com. It is Monday, March 30th, 2020. Uh, just got home from work. It's about 7.26 right now, according to the old watch. And boy, do I have a story for you. So you're probably looking at this thinking, what the heck's going on here? Well, uh, long story short, uh, from time to time, when you make a lot of videos and you've got SD cards and you transfer files to external hard drives and, and you stockpile videos, because that's the fun part, you know, opening up all your new stuff, using it, whatever. <laughs> and uh, the editing, not so fun, right? You kind of tend to put that off. Well, uh, this is like the third time or so I've been burned twice recently. And uh, we're having to redo the start of a video. And then I lost everything of a tool haul except for the part where I perfectly align the tools and say video thumbnail. Yeah, that part survived, but you know, the... The starting part that was important that we uh, can't easily recreate, that's gone. Gonna have to redo that, but I've been trying to get everything edited, <laughs> rendered, uploaded, done and behind me so I can move on to bigger and better things, and that's where we're gonna pick up here. Now the good news is, I think almost every clip from the Ballastal video survived, uh, which is good, but essentially the nuts and bolts of that one. This is the NWS knife, the single blade cable knife. It actually is easy to, and I wouldn't say easy to open, but I can actually open it without the use of pliers right <laughs> so we come in here we go to town could it be improved upon probably do the other knives open easier definitely this is the NWS multi knife right and I believe the clip where I sprayed this initially and saturated it has survived uh, the main thing in the main blade that I will use is the single one my lord this is just so ridiculous of a thing to have to do <laughs> this is still slimy and grimy because it has been soaked. I just continue to do this. I'm starting some work in on the truck, and so I've kind of been decking everything out. But um, nonetheless, as I say, in my spare time, when I've got fluids draining like last night, I come over here and I just mess with that thing in hopes that it breaks in. Kind of giving up hope on it. Again, if you want a knife and you prefer the Beechwood style handle <laughs> for kind of the, the vintage look, whatever vibe you're going for, Buy the single blade one and just save yourself the money. That's that's the nuts and bolts of that that you need to know. All right, so there is my setup. Probably not going to win any awards or uh, <laughs> accolades from anyone, but I took the shop towels, I wrapped it up. That's just a picture frame and wire, which I typically use. Uh, truth be told, those Ghidorah bolt cutters kind of had a hard time cutting that. I don't know if it's because it's damaged or if it's just too small of a wire, but that is soaked inside just as kind of a safe measure. I'm kind of going to, I wouldn't say saturate uh, the towel, but definitely get a little bit more on it. And my hope is that that just bleeds in slowly over time. I uh, have the uh, bad thumb outs, by the way. <laughs> so, anyway, that's what I'm going to do. It is Sunday night. It is 7.38 p.m. So we're going to come back in a couple days. We'll see how that has progressed. We'll see if it becomes functional. And uh, the smell, it is definitely unique, but I, I wouldn't say it's... Uh, objectionable I mean it's not like I'm over here gagging or anything uh, granted you have to keep in mind I'm typically in a machine shop uh, WD-40 and lava soap uh, Joe's hand cleaner also uh, are just like staples of my <laughs> uh, scent library if you will so this I don't find objectionable at all uh, it is like something I've not smelled before though so it's got the unique factor if you will that said this is what I've created we're gonna see what ballastol does to this NWS problem knife and uh, we will be back to check the results all right welcome back to the science fair it is Tuesday 6 59 p.m. just got home from work I didn't get to make it out here last night figured I would come out tonight and see where we are at if you hear a strange noise in the background my apologies it's the battery charger try to maximize my limited free time <laughs> but, uh, where we left off we had coated this sucker with ballastal uh, it made a noticeable difference immediately on the big blade uh, the main blade the one that's not notched for cable whatever you want to consider it but uh, it did make a vast improvement in that right off the bat everything else was kind of too tough to judge I wanted to just go ahead and saturate it see what would happen I will tell you when I came in the shop having last been out here Sunday night Monday missed the whole day out here uh, came in I was like man what is that smell and it wasn't overpowering wasn't overwhelming but it was something and I kind of was looking around thinking maybe there's like a leak or something and then it dawned on me I was like oh okay that's that's still lingering so I've also got the door cracked get some fresh air in here it's not bad 
but it is noticeable. I'll also say the little bit that dripped off onto the floor, kind of down by a crankshaft, which you can't see, uh, does seem to have kind of like stained the concrete. Maybe I can clean it with something. Uh, who knows, maybe we'll plug, what was it, uh, crud cutter? That stuff worked pretty good for me. But uh, this is what we have, and I want to see, first off, we're going to be rocking the uh, alphas that I stained with fence stain on accident. And, uh, I can tell you this is still still damp. Uh, it is currently 73 according to my watch when I was driving home in the Mopar 10. Uh, it read 76 at the work parking lot, cooled off to 74 uh, as I was getting home. So it's mid 70s. Uh, it was this uh, same same weather yesterday. Uh, long days here in the Texas Panhandle, but uh, nonetheless, you can see my fancy fancy. <laughs> Little, uh, picture wire. I love that stuff. You use it for everything. It's kind of like baling wire, but on a smaller scale. It's uh, pretty good stuff. I will say, you can note right there, my hands are extremely dry all the time, and uh, that puts some moisture on them. So we'll get this side off, and I'm thinking we'll do a, a double reveal, right? Don't, don't look at one side. We'll look at it all together type of a thing. Set that to the side because I always reuse that crud until I lose it or break it. But uh, let's go ahead and see how I wrapped her. Okay, so the wood still still saturated, still soaking it in, right? And it's really wet on that side, which is good. That's what we were going for. I want to come over here to my clean side. Let's go ahead and rub this thing down. Try my best to dry it off. And uh, of course, you got to keep in mind, I've literally <laughs> not just soaked this overnight, but over uh, two nights, I guess we could say. So will the wood stay like this? Will it dry out? I honestly don't know. Uh, it's sort of, I do, s I don't know. I was going to say I definitely preferred the way it looked prior. Now this is just a little too dark, but that kind of, kind of got like a cherry color to it. Sort of a cool, if it winds up looking like that, man, we made a huge improvement on this thing. But the main thing, I don't care what this looks like, it could be totally black. If we can at least open it, and to open it easily, I'll be a happy man, then we can actually feel like we can carry this thing and use it. So, uh, sadly, a Stav Villa knife, it's, it's work, work week, if you will, have not gotten to use it either day, unfortunately. Uh, so hopefully it'll get a heavy workload here moving in, or we may have to extend things. Everything else worked out beautifully. All right, so the scraper. That's still rough there, but it is opening. That's kind of slippery. That's shut. Let's see. There's only so much I can do before we have to resort to trying to pick this out with pliers. It's just, I kind of feel like it's a bad design, I gotta say. So I'm gonna have to go back to the 318s. We'll see if we hear anything. That opened easier than it usually does. It took some force with the pliers, but uh, let me bring this up closer to the camera. We'll see if we can hear anything. That's still kind of grindy. I feel like if this was a single blade knife that was rough, I think we'd had it fixed with this. We're probably going to have to have it in multi positions, uh, rinse and repeat type of a thing. Uh, the scraper definitely opens easier than it used to, which is nice don't really hear the grinding with it. Uh, the little blade here that has the cable provisions, it's actually, ooh, that cleaned the stain off pretty good. <laughs> off my gloves, whatever that's worth to you. Let's go ahead and shut this guy. It's not smooth, it's certainly not smooth, and it's partially, it's a little slick because it's coated in the pedestal. But it's also just, this is how this knife is. You want to open it, this is what you have to do. And I don't believe it should be like that. But, uh... It's freer than it was, but it's not... It's far from ideal, I'll put it that way. Now, this is the blade that we made a big impact on right off the bat. It's honestly the one that I would use the most out of this knife, so... It's still a little little gummy, but I mean, this right here is acceptable to me, okay? We can actually articulate this one. We'll get it shut all the way. If my thumb can survive, which is really hard to do since it's a little extra slick, this one is acceptable. I don't know that anything else on this knife, outside of the scraper, 
I I would be fine with that. I feel good about it. The other two, it's partially the design. It's partially probably just because we kind of have this little slick, <laughs> given what we've done to it over the course of the last 48 hours. But uh, I don't know, man. Let's see. We'll come in. You can see it's like chipping my nail up, too. This is my good thumb. It's just too tight. <laughs> I've never had a knife that was this bad for this long. Like I said, my free time, like right now when I'd be charging a battery, not recording, if I didn't have anything better to do, I would come and I would just open and close this thing in hopes that it would get better. That's an improvement. Uh, it is an improvement, we can at least say that. Uh, the one here though, the main blade, I can open and close. <laughs> <laughs> we can handle this one so I think what's gonna be key with this is just simply coming in and maybe spraying at all of the pivot points maybe breaking up whatever's in there as best we can and just hoping that we can get it to where we can use this if not what will happen is I will probably take the long blade which I can barely open because of my fingernail don't have long nails I'm sure if I did it would probably rip it off but uh, if I can't get this to be any smoother, this is going to sit on the bench or in the toolbox open, and it'll just be ready to slice and dice and cut open whatever I want it to. Uh, and that's kind of going to be how we attempt to salvage this one. And in my spare time, I'll continue messing with it, hoping and praying that we can somehow make this thing function like it should. Um, I don't know. Uh, would I advise that you purchase this one? Absolutely not. <laughs> It's really nice. It's not a bad price. I think you can get something better for equal money, lesser money, and certainly for a little more money. But if you're really wanting a wood-handled knife, particularly from a German tool company, NWS themselves offers this one right here. And it's $9.91, and I don't have any problems with it. It's never been hit with ballistol or anything, and I'm actually able to come in. My hands are a little slippery because we've been handling that saturated one but when they're not slippery I can open this one just fine uh, it's not the easiest thing in the world to open but it's not an issue either so I guess that is where we will leave this little experiment here there's really nothing else I'm feeling inclined to clean um, I could do a bonus since we're here uh, these are the bolt cutters that's terminology I wouldn't necessarily apply to these given the limitations I now know but there's like some funky coating. I don't know what it is. And uh, you can see it on both jaws there, particularly with my stained <laughs> gloves we've got present. What I want to do is we'll just take this one that's already soaked, okay, in the ballistol. And I want to see what, if anything, this will do to the jaw area. Oh, I think it, it took off whatever that is. You could chip it up with the uh, flat blade screwdriver. Uh, without effort, you know, is what I'm kind of trying to get at. Just like it was just almost like if you, uh, I don't know, ate a glazed donut and some of the glaze got off and uh, secured itself to your beard or your chin or uh, black hoodie, whatever you might be wearing. It was sort of one of those types of a thing. And uh, you can actually see some of it. I don't know that it'll show up real well, but where it looks like there's something weird, there is. It's what was on the jaws. So. Uh, it cleaned those successfully. Let's uh, go ahead and get the dry side over here. Wipe it down and at least now when I make the update on this video and I say I cut something that's way too big <laughs> over the like intended capacity. Now to be fair it did cut what we wanted it to. Uh, but yeah, we'll clean that right up. So cool. Uh, like I said, German tool reviews. That's where I first saw Ballastel. Uh, he raves about it, swears by it, seems really impressed by it. What I saw it do with the main blade in this knife uh, was nothing short of a miracle. We'll continue to work with it. Uh, on the other sides, I'm thinking we probably just need to hit all the pivot points. Basically everywhere it stops. Closed all the way out at 180. Uh, then come in like 135, 90, and 45. I'll try to articulate each one and spray. See what happens, it's something I will do in my spare time. <laughs> so, I clean this right up. Uh, you saw it kind of take a take a shine to the uh, little phyllo tack claw here as well, which was not dirty for what that's worth to you. Uh, but off and on, while we uh, do tool hauls and 
reviews and miscellaneous things if i have something weird something dirty something i think hey we'll see what the ballast will does to it i'll just interject that it'll probably be like a short 30 second one minute clip type of a deal but uh I would say it's a miracle worker on the main blade again if it wasn't slippery I think I could easily open that now uh, and that is the primary one that I would like to use out of here <laughs> so, uh, gonna continue to work on this sucker and see what happens but anyway I'm gonna get back check uh, see how the battery's doing I got some other stuff I wanted to take care of out here tonight now after that I used the ballistol to clean off the stain on these gloves which it did a pretty good job I did not invest much time at all in it and it was not it was a previously saturated rag from like two days ago when I did this last week. Uh, we could also, you see the stain here, let me grab a control. Which, it's this glove, this will be our control, it's got equal amounts of fence stain, right? And uh, we're going to take this saturated one, let's just see what happens. We'll come in on the ring finger, that one's not important to me. <laughs> and uh, Pinky, it's taking it off, it looks like, you can see it transfer here. Uh, we'll come in now to sort of the padded palm area, which I do like. That's one of the big selling points of this particular style from Alpha. And uh, looks like it's going to do a decent job cleaning them. Again, this is nothing I've wet down. This is literally from Sunday night, just with whatever's left on it. But yeah, I think we could definitely work with that. It doesn't seem to have done anything adverse. As you know, it's uh, from our original deal, it's uh, skin safe. It says it there on the can. Biodegradable, all that good fancy environmental stuff. But more importantly, the stuff does clean. I mean, look at that. It's a marked improvement, I must say. Uh, but anyhow, I'm going to quit rambling. I'm going to get back to uh, some other things I need to take care of. Here's kind of the before and after. And again, that's a very light cleaning that we just did. Nothing, nothing crazy. <laughs> nothing heavy duty. Uh, definitely seems to have potential. Like I said, we'll continue to use it, see what we make of it. But... Uh, if you're in the market for a German cable knife and you want one from NWS, buy that one. Save your money. You can basically get three of these, I believe, for the price of this one. Do that. If you want to spend $27, get three of those. Uh, if you really want the screwdriver feature, carry one. Okay. Uh, get the Viha Go Box. Do something along those lines. Uh, this one is just a complete pain. And uh, that's unfortunate, but like I said, we'll continue to work with it. I'm sure eventually we'll break it in. We'll break its will somehow. But uh, it's Tuesday night. I got to get back in and make supper, but I got some stuff to do here. So I'll quit rambling. Thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts on this. Uh, if you have ever derped around and greatly exceeded the capacity of bolt cutters. Uh, if you use ballastol, what do you think of it? What do you use it on? Uh, what if you find it does best? What if you find it may not do so well? Feel free to leave that in the comments to help other people out. That said, I gotta go. I will catch you back here in the next one. Uh, so what I decided to do now, just to kind of like wrap up our initial testing with the ballistol, is pick up a rag that dropped. And uh, we're gonna come in. I got a couple of different things we're gonna throw at it. This is probably my most used pair of uh, wire cutters. And the reason for that you know what these do? They're always out. I have no idea the brand. I have no idea where they came from. It's one of those tools that just shows up. And uh, you know what I do with it? I cut twine for weed eaters. <laughs> yeah. And I cut a lot of it. I've got cups of it. Uh, don't see it on my shelf. There it is. It would be hard to get to. But uh, the self-feeding trimmers, whatever you want to call it, trimmer, weed eater, uh, if you're still using a spool, you're missing out. Uh, the cell feed is amazing whenever it, uh, in fact, I've got some back here tucked in. I would come in, I had my length that I liked, and I would just trim it. And that's a little bit long, probably why it was an end of a spool or something, but it's the thick line, like the .095, if I remember right. It's sad I can quote that off. <laughs> and uh, I have my lengths, I know what works for me, I come in, I cut a crud ton of it. I mean, I go through the spool, it's one of these things, sort of like the NWS knife. If I've got fluid draining or I need a break, you know, from being hunched over a fender, I would come and I would just snip, snip, snip. And these are what I use. And they're filthy, they really shouldn't be. You know, it's not like my hands were always dirty when I did that. But, uh, what I figured we would do, I've got a dirty towel right here, shop rag. I'm just gonna hit it with uh, one spray of this stuff. And I just want to come in. Well, first, I guess, hit the head. Well, there's what we're looking like right now. I mean, these are not, not of any significant value. There's no, like, 
cool backstory aside from me not knowing anything about them, <laughs> really. Um, so I'm assuming it's something that somebody that did work at the house when I was a little kid left. And uh, then they, of course, make their way to me. So uh, that's that. It's actually cleaned that up really well. Just again, for all the time I've invested, you have seen. I'm trying to scrub that so we can see a brand on it. It looks like there's an F9Y, maybe, and possibly some sort of an icon on it. Uh, this will be probably the question of the day now. What the heck is this? So up at the top, it's sort of like, uh, almost looks like two books or crosses and squares. I don't know. Down there, it looks like EST or F9Y. That, that angle is like an e, E9Y. This angle is an F9Y. Uh, there, it looks like EST. <laughs> If this is of any help to you. Uh, let's hit this side a little bit more. Definitely does a good job. I mean, when it's something simple like this, you're not asking the world from it, you know, like making a knife open easier. <laughs> but, uh, this side just appears to be the joint, but it did a legitimately good job there. Well, let me pan back out for you. And I'll hit another squirt with it. <laughs> We're going to come in. Uh, this side of the handle is a lot cleaner than this one, so we're going to, of course, task it with the dirtiest side. Again, with me not knowing the history on these tools, I don't really know what that is, but I do know that it's coming up. Again, very little. What you see here is live action. <laughs> it's clean now, so uh, this is a traditionally dipped handle, so if your channel locks are filthy, uh, maybe pick some up at a garage sale if you've inherited some recently, uh, whatever it may be. And you just think, man, you know, these are in pretty good shape. They just need to be cleaned. Ballast still becomes a pretty good option for you. Again, I don't want to waste a ton of time because you get the idea. If I clean that up, it's just a matter of time before I get the rest of it. So uh, that's a win. Did a fantastic job there for what we're doing. I think it's a decent product. Again, could you find something better, you know, locally? Possibly, if you've got something you swear by, that's cool. But uh, if you're in the market, if you want to try something out, uh, I have no qualms recommending this stuff, particularly just for like the light cleaning and kind of protecting your tools, which, let's face it, they're an investment. You can make a living with these things. But uh, if I had a functional thumb, you know, it would be a little easier to clean that, I think. But for what it is, uh, it's safe, it's eco-friendly, uh, it's non-harmful, non-carcinogenic, all that good stuff. Made in America, I guess uh, developed originally in Germany, so you kind of have your crossover points. Should keep most people happy. And uh, like I said, I picked this up, never heard of this stuff. Uh, then uh, German Tool Reviews raved about it. I can see why. I think with the NWS knife, we, uh, we may be asking a bit much. But uh, it did make a significant improvement in that first blade. Now everything is just completely soaked. Uh, my plan is to continue to do that, continue to articulate it, and then come in as time allows, see if I can get it to work a little bit better. And then I also want to see if this will dry out, if like it's forever now, this color. Which is kind of cool, but kind of not cool at the same time, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, the NWS really stands out there. It hadn't wiped that off, but uh, we'll see if we can maybe like heat it up or something along those lines. Nonetheless, just wanted to throw that little bit extra at you. Who knows, I might even just make this a standalone video. I'm going to wrap this up. Again, I don't know how I'm going to piece this together, if this will be standalone, if you're going to then see me wipe that down, or if I'll interject it somewhere, I really don't know. Uh, my apologies, the video kind of got messed up. It sucks when that happens, particularly for me, trying to figure out how to recover and salvage it all. <laughs> so, I will leave it at that. LoneStarMopars.com is a website. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all three at Lone Star Mopars. I've got to go fix another video and then uh, redo an entire tool wall. So I'm going to try to get that knocked out so I can get back to the truck. And with that said, I will catch you back here for more action from the shop.